In the late 1940s here in Moscow, the sort of newly at the time created Soviet government decided to change the face or change the skyline of that time's Moscow forever. And they decided to build seven big buildings in a new sort of Stalinist architectural style. And the result of that were uh, seven beautiful buildings, seven Soviet Stalinist skyscrapers that were built here in Moscow. Those skyscrapers were called the Seven Sisters. And to this very day, those Seven Sisters are uh, sort of standing tall reminding people of the glory of the uh, old Soviet days essentially. So guys join me in today's video where we're gonna be taking a look and sort of uh, going on a hunt for all of the seven sisters, all of the seven Stalinist skyscrapers built here in Moscow and let's see what they're really like. So right now we're actually in front of the first stop on our uh, journey today. It's actually the building of the Moscow State University. Uh, as you can see, it's a very, very uh, big, tall building with uh, a lot of, you know, Soviet insignias on it. You know, Soviet coat of arms and everything. All the great stuff that you would come to expect from a uh, from a Soviet building of that time. Now this one is actually kind of funny to me because, you know, guys, I come from Chelyabinsk, a provincial city in Russia. And we actually kind of have our own copycat of this building right here, which is the uh, South Ural State University. You know, I never went to Moscow for like a pretty long period of my life where the first time I went here was like 2015 and uh when I finally saw this building in person I realized just how tiny and pathetic our building in Chilepinsky really is because it's like really nothing compared to this I don't know if you guys clearly understand like the scale of everything but this building is absolutely freaking massive I mean I've just uh, went around it and I'm still sort of discovering new sections of it it's just absolutely insanely huge you know there's like whole sections here with like different statues and everything just take this as a fun fact for example uh, back in those times the Soviets were planning to build the tallest building in all of Europe and at the very top of the skyscraper you would have a giant bronze statue of Lenin sort of uh, you know paving the way for the future that building never ended up getting built uh, but if it did I think it would be a very, uh, you know, the weirdest sort of Lenin statue, yes. And here we are right now actually in front of the central entrance to the Moscow State University now. So here on the top it says uh, 1949 to 1953, which actually the years where this building was built. You know, this entire place is like a huge park, like, you know, the place we're in actually in front of right now, you know, it's very dead at the moment, but it's not always like that, I promise you, because this place is actually very, I guess, infamous for being the playground for a lot of uh, Moscow street races. People come here with like all their insane Ferraris and everything and drive around, drift around, all these like uh, stuff goes down in this place, okay? I've just come to, you know, find some solace at the most dead hour possible. Um, and I like it. Here's actually some evidence that there's drifting and stuff going around. You see those tire marks, you know, the skid marks right here on the, uh, on the asphalt. Definite proof that there's some real Tokyo drift going on here in front of the Moscow State University. Now the Moscow State University is located near a sort of an uphill area here in Moscow called Varabiove Gore and uh, it has sort of a nice view of the rest of the city from here. We can see actually a bunch of stuff we're gonna visit today. Well, that's the Moscow City Financial Center which we already were at in another video and I can clearly see at least uh, three or four of those Stalinist buildings. You can see uh, sort of hanging high, uh, you know, as compared to the rest. Uh, that's exactly, uh, you know, where we're going. Today is going to be a mighty long day. I can tell that. <laughs> now, there's actually a uh, cable car station in here, uh, very, very close by. So I think we're going to go and take a nice ride in the cable car, sort of see the sights, and uh, then uh, continue on with our uh, epic Stalin skyscraper trip. <laughs> Okay. Uh -huh. This is pretty much perfect because I'm gonna be the only one in this cable car. I like it because uh, that means I'm not gonna have to be uh, awkward and uh, you know record <laughs> in front of other people speaking here. So great, I love it. This actually is this a, is this a ski slope? This, there's snow right here. I, I'm actually really, really confused. I think it is. I am absolutely and thoroughly confused on how they're able to still have snow up here when there's no snow nowhere, you know, in Moscow already. You know, it's, it's, it's spring. It's hot. Well, that's great, you know. Who'd have known that uh, Moscow Austria actually has a built-in ski resort in the middle of the city? Amazing. I love it. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I guess this is the, you know, the tallest points we're gonna reach up to here. Uh, pretty cool, you know, you get a nice view, you can still see that Moscow State University building right here because it's really, really tall. 
you know, a bunch of sort of newish buildings were here. And, uh, yeah. Man, this is the most annoying vlog I have to shoot yet because there's just too much good stuff. Look at this. Beautiful Soviet sort of, uh, apparently this is some sort of just a giant swimming pool basically. Incredible, just amazing Soviet building. This right here, you know, there's just, Moscow just has too much good Soviet goodness to show. And it's like, I kind of want to just, you know, stop my initial idea of my video of showing the Stalin skyscrapers and just show whatever this is. But no, you know, I need to stay focused. I need to visit all the 7-7 seven sisters, all the 7-7 seven seven sisters <laughs> in this video. Otherwise, I'm a liar. So, uh, let's, let's keep at it. You know, the Moscow State University is actually located far ahead from every other skyscraper we're going to be looking at today. It's been a hell of a ride. And also, I got lost in the Moscow metro system. You know, I'm a provincial boy. It took some time, but we're finally here uh, in the most central location. And I can already see our next target right in front of us, uh, this second building, which actually might be my favorite. So finally, here we are at the second stop of our trip. It's the building of the uh, Ministry of the Foreign Affairs of Russia, or I guess it used to be Ministry of the Foreign Affairs of the Soviet Union, obviously. Um, I would like to come a bit closer, but there's apparently some TV shoot going on there right now or something, and uh, I don't want to be a disturbance or anything. But uh, When looking at a lot of these buildings, you probably might notice that they're slightly similar to some of the buildings you might see in America. For example, the uh, actually Manhattan Municipal Building in New York, or the, actually the Empire State Building. The truth is that, yes, uh, these uh, Soviet buildings are built in this sort of the Stalinist architectural style, but they probably did copy a little bit uh, when they were building these. And, uh, you know, the parallels are definitely there. Um, although I do think they kind of have a sort of a unique style of their own. And of course, of course, the most beautiful thing we can notice is the giant ass Soviet coat of arms on top there, which uh, is actually not the thing that's making this building my favorite out of all of them. But uh, if I was more than bankrupt, that would definitely be the reason why. <laughs> and of course, there's a lot of different Soviet stars and everything all over the place. You know, it's not a Soviet building unless it has like a billion of these Soviet stars encrusted on the walls. And this one is definitely, you know, it, it checks out. So I like that. everybody so we just finally arrived at our third location now which is the uh, so-called Hotel Ukraine here which is you know <laughs> considering everything that's going on right now the name is kind of unlucky but um, it's been since turned you know it used to be a Soviet hotel back in the day but it's since been turned into a Radisson sort of a chain of hotels and uh, I think it might be Putin himself who just arrived here at this hotel because like, there's like a ton of cars that have um, well, special lights that kind of um, basically this means that all the cars that just arrived here which I think I just came out here as well with um, they're like a part of a convoy some sort of thing which is actually you know a pretty common thing here in Moscow you know usually all the time you'd be riding down a highway or something and they'll be like 30, 50 cars or whatever with these uh, sort of uh, little lights on top of them riding down. That means there's some sort of governmental official that's probably uh, driving down the roads. And this is exactly what we just passed. And there's like, there's like literally 50 cars here, guys. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, technically I'm not doing anything wrong. You know, I'm just in a public place. I'm recording or whatever, but there's like 50 cars. It literally looks like Putin is right there, dude. I want to eat my ass out of there. I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> I do not feel comfortable. But yeah, that being said, this is the sort of Hotel Ukraine. It's a very large one as well right here. Let me get like one more shot of it, I guess, before we go, uh, before, you know, we get uh, sent to jail for recording a Putin's convoy or whatever that was. <laughs> it was like 50 cars there, man. Come on, it's ridiculous. As I'm standing here on the Ukrainian Boulevard representing, I'm thinking how much money I'm wasting on taxes in the city because they're ridiculously expensive compared to Chilevis. I don't think you guys realize how big Moscow really is and how far away all of these Stalinist 
uh, you know, pieces of architecture are from each other. I have to literally traverse like 10 kilometers from each and every one to the other one. Smash like, guys, you know, I'm wasting it tons. You know, huge investments. Huge investments are being made upwards to $20 a video, okay, to create this content. I've never spent this much money on a video in Chilebis. So, uh, smash like. And uh, let's uh, continue our, uh, our tour to the, uh, is it fourth? Yes, yes, fourth building now on the... Uh, <laughs> on the list of the Stalinist skyscrapers of Moscow. Christian. Okay, here we are guys, finally on the fourth stop of our tour, which is actually uh, a residential building right here. The coolest thing I read up about this building right here is actually that it has a... It's connected to some sort of underground, uh, I don't know, and it apparently has uh, some sort of bunker underneath it. So uh, in case, you know, anything starts, uh, people that live in this building right here might be the safest. And you can see it's pretty epic, you know, there's just a whole bunch of statues right here, which is, um, I guess it's supposed to be a, a soldier of some sort because he has a, he has a gun, uh, I guess a World War II type gun. You know, the style is very much like we said, this is the Stalinist architecture, so-called. It's very gargantuan, very exaggerated. Also at the same time, it has these sort of features of uh, old Italian architecture, I guess you could see, like, you know, different statues and stuff like that on buildings in Italy, etc. You know, seeing all of these statues and everything, it really reminds me of, you know, when I was in Rome and I saw a lot of buildings. It's kind of a piece of everything, you know, the Soviet, uh, the Soviet insignia, the Soviet coat of arms, uh, the statues, the overall shape of the building. It's sort of uh, kind of ripped from every sort of uh, possible influence. And it's, uh, it's pretty crazy, but it's really, really cool. And as you can see, you know, this building is located in a very, very historical area here, you know. Essentially, if you're a Soviet fanatic, this would be the perfect place for you. Especially if you have a few million bucks in your bank account. And if you want a, you know, a cool place to live in. Not just some, you know, stupid ass penthouse or whatever. If you want to live like a true king in Russia, make a few million dollars and go ahead. This would be your place of residence. Amazing. I cannot even fathom living in a place like this. Man, let's go and uh, check out uh, the fifth stop at our journey now. Here you guys can see the notorious Moscow traffic jams. Beautiful. Kilometers upon kilometers of people just standing in lines, honking and hating each other. Just use the metro, just like I did. <laughs> What's the problem? I have to admit I'm a big fan of this neighborhood right here. There's barely anybody here and it almost feels like a small European city. So I've actually seen this building plenty of times, but I've never come to it from this angle. I've only ever come to it from sort of the front. Now we're in the back. <laughs> you know, I really do feel like I've unlocked some location which I shouldn't be able to visit because, uh, <laughs> you know, this is technically the back, uh, you know, the backyard, I guess, area of this residential building. I've never actually been here because a lot of the times when you see a building that's, you know, this intimidating, this, you know, where the apartments are this expensive, you're kind of like, ooh, I don't want to go there, I don't want to disturb the people, but now, you know, I'm, I'm in vlogging mode, I don't care. I've come to smoke and shit and piss <laughs> in their backyard because I'm never going to be able to afford to build, <laughs> live to live in a building like this, let's be honest. Now, I noticed some, something right next to this building which I just had to record. Here's the thing, since, you know, this is such an expensive apartment building, a lot of the cars that's parked around here are, you know, pretty expensive. You know, there's like Porsches, you know, Mercedes all over the place here, but one guy, one dude is keeping it authentic. He's keeping it Soviet because you can see a real Soviet Muscovich parked in here and it's in a really bad state. It looks like... Oh, that's actually rust. I thought that was dirt. Okay. What can you do still? It's an authentic piece of uh, Soviet craftsmanship here. At least somebody's sticking it to the roots in this apartment building. You know, it's pretty fitting. If you live in a Soviet apartment building, you gotta drive a Soviet car. If you don't, you're a complete fraud and a sellout to the West. And yes, that is coming from me. No fuckers bangers. Again, if you guys want to live in an authentic place like this, something authentic, Soviets, uh, and you know, you, you got cash to blow, three million dollars, something like that, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, and you can get yourself a, an apartment in this. Big, beautiful, big, very tall ceilings and everything, uh, you know, just like the Soviet elite used to live. If you, if you're about that life, 
go ahead and uh, get in. I will get, be getting back to my shitty comic block and shit. I thank you. Thank you, everybody. I want to die. Oh guys, there you go. I think uh, we just accidentally found, found a way to enter this uh, Soviet building by walking in into the average every man's uh, grocery store Pitorochka, which everybody in Russia knows and loves. But that was the most dripped out Pitorochka I think I've seen in my entire life. I mean, are you kidding me? Soviet chandeliers all up on the ceiling, you know, all these like sort of different Soviet uh, engravings on the walls and everything. I mean, albeit it's just turned into a regular, you know, poopy ass grocery store, but that was crazy. I mean, I, I just was walking by, I'm just going to the metro here i didn't even realize i'm still like next to this uh, building where we're checking out and i just walked in to get a water and there you go i found some soviet goodness you never know where you're gonna end up in moscow so at least we finally found a way to enter one of these seven sisters one of the stalin skyscrapers so today is definitely not wasted already Well guys, there we go. Uh, welcome to stop number six now. Again, yet another uh, epic uh, uh, <laughs> Stalinist skyscraper building. To be honest guys, at this point in the video, they kind of all just look samey to me. I mean, this one is pretty cool, I guess. Nothing to us in about it. The only thing I can really say is that this one is also a residential one, you know, a Soviet coat of arms on it. Uh, there's a red star in the front. In the front. I mean, you've seen it all at this point, you know, they're kind of all the same. Obviously, when you see, you know, six, seven of them in a row, you're not going to be as impressed. But still, you know, really cool. A really cool piece of uh, Soviet architecture. Now, the way I actually planned out my trip for this entire hunt for, you know, Soviet Stalinist skyscrapers is that for the last stop, at least for the last two, I wouldn't have to traverse as much. I've kind of, you know, it's been a long way, you know, it took the entire day to basically just see all of these. But with this last two, I planned it really, really well because here's the first one, actually, you know, the sixth one we're looking at. And right there in the distance, you can see the number seven, the final stop in our today's video. I'm very excited for this video to be over with. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm just way too tired at this point. But, you know, I'm still on the hunt. I'm still excited to see this very last uh, style in the skyscraper so now one interesting thing which i probably should have mentioned a bit earlier in the video at this point is that um some people who may be watching this video from uh ex-soviet satellite countries etc for example like poland or latvia etc may actually find these buildings pretty familiar because actually these uh, spread actually way further than russia as well as far as i know there's one stalinist uh skyscraper just like this in kiev the capital of ukraine there should be one in warsaw uh, the capital of poland and and I think there's also one in Bucharest, uh, Romania, and there's apparently also one in Riga, the capital of Latvia. So, you know, just like, you know, everything Soviet, you know, it spreads out way further than uh, the even the reaches of the Soviet Union itself. And, uh, you know, the Soviet uh, skyscrapers are no exception. So if you're in any of the cities listed above, make sure to visit your own uh, version. <laughs> As you can see guys, I'm not the only moron like this, just visiting every uh, <laughs> uh, Soviet skyscraper today. There's an actual guided tour happening in the back of me. That's nice to know that I'm not the only one who cares. So this is essentially our last stop today. This is the number seven, which is the Hotel Leningradskaya, which is now known, uh, is now has been uh, denationalized essentially, which, you know, it used to be a hotel that belonged to the Soviet state. Now it's actually a Hilton uh, hotel, which belongs to the Hilton, you know, chain of hotels. And uh, you can see there's a, a bit of a Soviet text uh, from the old days still left up there. It says Gostinica Leningradska. So now this area we're actually in front of right now is uh, one of the most infamous areas in Moscow. I would like to say it's called the uh the square of the three uh, train stations. Basically, all you guys know that train stations are usually in, in, in any European city, basically, as well. It's usually like one of the dodgiest places you can possibly go to, you know, there's like, <laughs> it's just pickpockets and, you know, robberies, everything. Well, this place, this entire area is basically three times that because it's actually three train stations that are located in one uh, large sort of uh, area. So essentially, kids, if you're in Moscow, if it's past your bedtime, that area please do not go there 
ignore it because uh, I mean to be completely fair nothing's probably gonna happen to you there's a ton of police roaming around there and stuff like that but I would just not recommend going there it's not a nice vibe you know what I mean So yeah guys, I am finally relieved to say that we have visited all the seven sisters or all the seven Stalinist skyscrapers in Moscow. It's been a long day, it's been a long journey, I'm tired as hell, you know, we have to view a number through one to seven. I'm gonna need a number six <laughs> with extra fries and dip or whatever the big smoke said because boy I am hungry, okay? I feel like today was a great vlog. I feel like uh, I've showed you guys different, a lot of different neighborhoods and different sites of Moscow because even though all those buildings are pretty similar, each and every building is sort of located in a different area and different neighborhood and has a different vibe to it. So if you guys did enjoy this video, if you guys do want to see more vlogs on my channel, something like that, maybe me traveling around Russia, make sure to please slap the like on it and as well guys, subscribe and donate to my Patreon because you know, just the amount of money that's been spent on taxis and metro rides today has been insane okay but yeah guys i think that's gonna be pretty much it today's video thank you guys so much for watching it and i will see you guys in the next one peace